Okay, here's another example of documentation. Um, and on this one, I put my business card right there because I didn't want anybody stealing it. And I put the date right here, so it's it used by my client. I put the address on here so there's no, no way anybody could see that I was talking about this fallen willow tree in red right here. Uh, number one. So your, your report is going to be lists of one through five. It's going to be discussions where you walk around the tree. It's going to be diagrams, aerial photos, maps, and other documentation where you will win the war of the words. You think that you're a tree surgeon. You think that you are a, a grounds worker whose job is to maintain the forest. You think that you're a greenskeeper in a golf course and your job is to make sure that those damn trees don't block the fairway. No, you are in a war of the words where you have to justify all of your decisions with sound science. Okay, so here's an example of using a laser rangefinder to check the height of the tree. This thing costs maybe three or four hundred bucks. This, this is the Nikon, um, and it's a fantastic tool. Um, and I happen to know that arborist, he's related to me. Okay, so I'm a retired climber. My son is now my climber. So this is Robert Oxman, and he is making a name for himself in the world of tree care. He is a video director. And we team up using this camera and his cameras, and we make videos on YouTube. There's about 700 YouTube videos on my channel, Michael Oxman. So enjoy that. And later on, I don't know, I highly doubt we're going to have time to watch any videos. Next, please. All right, so here is uh, another friend of mine, Alan Campbell, uh, and he is drilling into the trunk of the tree with a hollow drill bit, and he's going to extract the uh, core sample. And he'll look at the condition of the ring, so look at the color of the wood, he'll look at uh, the qualities of the core that he picks out, which is a little, little bit smaller than a pencil. He's going to feel how much pressure it takes to put that drill bit in there because you put it in there with a hand screw. He is soaking it up right now. He's already done his root investigation. He's doing his trunk investigation. He's doing a branch investigation, a twig investigation, and a foliage investigation. This tree turned brown on us in summer. This is a Katsura. I don't know if you know, but Katsuras have a very particular water requirements. Katsura trees aren't from Seattle. They're not from this continent. They're from Japan and China. So uh, when these trees started turning color, that was a big problem because you'll notice these walls. This is a very steep hillside. This is at the Seattle Symphony Hall. This is a half a billion dollar facility. It has a light rail station in the basement, and the concert hall is completely sound insulated from the noise of the trains running 150 feet below ground. Uh, there is also the Washington State Veterans Memorial in this garden. This is called the Garden of Remembrance. And I'm overjoyed to say that I got appointed to the advisory board to oversee the management of the garden of remembrance. I never thought that I would be given that honor. There's thousands of deceased veterans' names engraved on stone walls in this garden. So the importance of the trees was critical, and we had to keep these trees alive. The outcome, we found that all of this undergrowth had grown so dense, there was a solid mat of roots, and no water could enter the soil. We fixed it, the trees are fine, the tree recovered because we were diligent and we checked all five things and we isolated it down and we found that the problem was in the roots. Next, please. All right, now here's a close up. Um, right next to Alan's phone, here's the hollow drill bit. Right here is the core sample and this is the handle and this is the hollow drill bit itself. Uh, oh, yes, sorry, this one is the extractor. This extractor 
telescopes down inside, fits inside the hole on the drill bit, and this is the power of human hands to turn the screw and get it into the wood. So uh, I have a video on YouTube about how to use and why we use the increment borer to check the increments of annual growth in the rings of the tree. So I'm giving you references uh, to where you can find more information. I have a lot of information on my website, which is treedoctor.com, which if you're writing anything down, just write down T-R-E-E-D-R.com. That's my website. It's like a 25-year-old website. It has tons of stuff, including pictures of climbing redwood trees, which we're going to find out at 2 o'clock. All right, next, please. Okay, so there's Alan. He's taking close-up photos. He's got this tape measure here. Uh, he, this was during COVID a year or two ago, so he's wearing his mask. Next, please. All right, so now he's doing his foliar assessment. You can see these leaves are all shriveled up, and uh, we knew that we had water availability problems. Now, the tree might have plenty of water. In fact, the water was just running off, going over the curb, floating down the street, and yet these leaves dried out because no water was getting to them. So, so drought in, can involve a bunch of things, and some of which are interruption in the water flow. Ah, now, so here's the soil inspection. You can see that this is a hollow uh, soil sampler tube. The top two, three inches is wet, and below three inches is bone dry and white dirt. No water has gone below three inches in this garden of a half a billion dollar facility. So we were able to successfully uh, turn this negative situation, which ordinarily would have re resulted in cutting these trees down, which would have been a catastrophe, to saving them just by modifying our soil treatment, doing some uh, poking of holes to allow uh, water infiltration. And, and if, if, when I say water infiltration, I'm depending on you to know what that means, okay? You know that on a hill, water is going to run off. The steepness of the slope will prevent that water from reaching your target roots. So water infiltration is one of these things that your boss is gonna want you to tell him that you learned at this class at one o'clock on February 15th, 2023. Tell them that you learned about water availability and how water infiltration is restricted by a lot of different factors, including competing vegetation, slopes, and other reasons. All right, so Alan was checking the trunks. Keep going. Uh, here we had some vandalism. And uh, unfortunately, because the Seattle Symphony Hall is downtown, it's the outdoor bathroom for a lot of homeless people and they weren't too polite all the time. Next. All right, so now this one, uh, the, these holes were drilled by a homeowner. This is a separate site. Now we're off of the symphony hall. But they were trying to get rid of the stump. And you can see that it, it just didn't do anything. This tree was already hollow the day that it was cut down. In fact, even this root had pulled loose from the trunk, be, uh, which caused the tree to die. And then I, because my responsibility must be to, it, to be able to communicate with somebody when I'm not even there talking to them, I put this pen there as a reference so they can know how big this stump was. And it's a form of communication. It's a nonverbal communication. You people all in this class, in this WGGA, all, all need to enhance your powers of communication. You know so much. Like, I would love to sit down with a bunch of you and just, just grill you. I, I've already talked to a few people here uh, this weekend, uh, this week. So, so I want to know what you know. There are some things that you know more about than hardly anybody else in the world. You have a particular inclination to investigate certain things and become an expert. You have boned up on this obscure stuff, and you know what makes stuff work. 
I want to know that. Learn how to communicate. Share with the world. Okay, now here's a, now here's a, this is a fake situation. This is a, this, this giant sequoia tree is, is less than 100 years old, but it's in a well irrigated uh, uh, lawn and it is on a hill and water is just running into the roots. And I, I don't know if you know, but, but uh, there are certain types of trees that are very water responsive, like cottonwoods and maples and other riparian species that can handle flooded conditions. And they just grow faster. It makes them happy. You would think they would make, it would make them mad. Cypress trees can grow in salt water. I'm not from New Orleans, but it is strange to see that a tree is growing with four foot of salt water on the side of the trunk. And they even send little roots up to act as snorkels. So, so this giant sequoia tree is in a residential neighborhood in Seattle. Fantastic tree. This is, this is a, a heritage tree. It's a tree that's been recognized as having uh, uh, shared our uh, culture, the, the whole life, uh, life of the society. Seattle, Seattle really didn't even start until about uh, 1875. So, so it's, a, it's a young place, and this is one of the first trees that was installed in the landscape as an amenity, as a non-native. Non, another word for non-native tree is an exotic species. So while you're learning how to communicate, you're going to have to expand your vocabulary. You're going to have to learn more uh, uh, techniques. <coughs> Keep going. Ah, this is a tree that's in a creek, and uh, it's completely wild. And I'm, I got one hand on the tree trunk and one hand on this other tree that's fallen over, and it was perfectly fine because it's just the woods. So what happens in a highly maintained uh, memorial garden and out in the woods some things are unacceptable and some things are just perfectly natural so you got to put yourself in the shoes of uh, somebody else that appreciates nature for nature's sake but also put yourself in the shoes of somebody that is going to want a tidy urban landscape so you you make the decision all right, so here is, uh, believe it or not, this is recreational tree climbing. Um, I love recreational tree climbing. I have climbed thousands of trees in 50 years, most of them for money, and I just wanted a chance to start to climb for fun. So that was recreational tree climbing. And the funnest trees to climb are the big ones. I don't know uh, how many people are actual tree climbers here. I recommend it. Yes, we got a tree climber back there. So these people pay $30 each, and uh, they were strapped into a harness, and this young man here uh, enabled them to get up in the tree, and look at the view. This is right on Puget Sound. Uh, next, please. All right, so here's your resource. This is a 500-page book. It's called The Fundamentals of General Tree Work. There's nothing fundamental about it. You'll notice the eucalyptus tree here. Uh, this is uh, the author, uh, Jerry Baronic, and uh, he made his living as a line clearance tree trimmer and as a timber faller on the California coast. Um, and he's retired now, and he's just doing books. He's got about seven books that he's written, and now he's compiling a new book, The Flora of California. Does that sound like a book with a Massive scope, flora, every plant in California. It's going to be a database. All right, so, so where are we? Here, this, this is a freeway. Uh, it's not. A free, it's just a street over overpass, but there is a creek, and you would not even know that you're in the city. So everything that you do is going to have to be tailored on, on where you are and what's appropriate, and what other people agree is is appropriate. All right, so we got about 15 minutes left, so let's just keep going. Ah, this is a videographer. Now this lady, her name is Tree Mama. And if you go to treemama.org, write that down, she has an app that she got together with some uh, software developers, and you can take a picture of a tree with your phone, 
the software looks at the trunk and it measures the diameter of the tree. It records it. It takes your phone uh, uh, GPS data. It puts the address of the tree. And the only thing that you really need to do to develop this amateur tree inventory is to find out the name of the tree. So treemama.org, and this is just uh, an example of somebody who has taken technology and run with it. Yes? And then you can view all the other ones that have been inventory on that software? Yeah, there's maps, and you, maps can, and you can draw a circle, and, and it'll tell you everything about the trees within there. There's also uh, another question right here. Uh, does it interconnect with other programs such as GIS? Not yet. No, and, and uh, it's, it's, this is an open source software program. That means the same thing as when I first started and I said, I want you guys to raise your hand, I want you to speak out, I want you to yell. If you know a software guy, send him to treemama.org and let him jump in this project and he can give us the benefit of his expertise. We, we, could use some, we could use some graphic designers. Any video game players in here? I'll bet you guys are good graphic designers. You would know what works. Well, we need some artwork. We need all kinds of things. Tree research is in its infancy. This is citizen tree research. And on my jacket, I should tell you that I'm part of the tree fund. I raise money for the tree fund. And uh, this is next, next slide. Uh, these are some of the tools that you need, okay? Uh, to do what I want to do, crossbows. There's three different crossbows here. Um, and uh, so what I did was uh, Jerry Baronic took me up my first redwood tree in 1988. I had so much fun. It's 15 feet in diameter. And uh, uh, I started taking other people up redwood trees. And I took him as a pie piper. And I tried to imitate him and give him some, some uh, support. Spread the word about how nice it is to climb trees that are a couple hundred feet tall. When you're up in a tree that's a couple hundred feet tall, the branches are so thick, you can't see the ground. The branches are so thick, you can't hear anything on the ground. All you can hear is wind. So, uh, so we got started taking these people up in redwood trees, and we came up with this logo on the back of my jacket, which is the little blue men climbing the redwood trees. And we charged commission, and we started giving the money to these scholarships for college students that are enrolled in tree research programs. Now tonight, we're gonna have an auction to raise money to give out two scholarships to students doing tree work in college. So we want you to recognize that in 50 years, no one will remember what you do. They'll only remember what you gave them. So give now. Give to the next generation. Give to the youngsters and give them an alternative to playing video games. Get them up in trees. Okay, so here's one of the tools. This is the crossbow. Here's Robert Oxman again. I wonder how he got his picture taken when I'm standing there with my camera. So he's shooting an arrow that has a fishing line attached to it. That arrow will go up there about 150, 175 feet, and it'll go over a branch and come down to earth, maybe on the other side of the tree. It's reeling off the fishing line. We take off the arrow, we put a throw line or a parachute cord, and then there is a, there is a fishing reel attached right there, and we'll reel it in, and that parachute card will go up 175 feet over the branch and back down to the, the crossbow. Then we remove the crossbow, put it away, we're done, and then we put a climbing line on there and tie one end to the tree trunk. The other end is just dangling there free. We put on our ascenders, and we just climb that dangling rope, just like Jack and the Beanstalk, and we step off onto the first branch 175 feet off the ground. On a redwood tree, a coast redwood tree, you still have another 100 feet to go. And that last 100 foot climb is pretty much like climbing a 100 foot tree around here, a cottonwood or something. Pretty easy. The hard part is the crossbow 
and the crossbow is the thing that enables us to climb any tree. All right, now, volunteer work. I do volunteer work. This is a project called Saluting Branches. Saluting Branches happens uh, one day per year in September, and uh, this group of people here, uh, Robert Axon's right there, and I'm right behind him. And we go to the Veterans National Cemetery outside of Seattle, which is run by the US government, and we do free tree work as an arborist work day. And we do stuff that maybe the management of the cemetery doesn't really think is high priority. We do it anyway. So Saluting Branches gives uh, about $3 million worth of volunteer service to the federal government every September 24th. We've been doing it for eight years. If you want to be remembered for what you gave to the community today, if you volunteer for Saluting Branches at a veterans facility near you, you will be remembered. We do 85 different cemeteries across the country that same day. About, uh, I don't remember the thousand or more arborists volunteer that one day. And they don't get anything out of it. But what we do get to do is we get to talk, I know this guy, I know this gal, I know these people. These people have become my friends because I've been doing it for eight years at the same cemetery. Next, please. So here's Robert Oxman. This is what it's all about. He's a videographer. And he's standing there and all of these people gave their lives. Now Robert was a combat veteran in Afghanistan in 07 and 08. And uh, he had a New York Times uh, reporting team uh, embedded with his unit. And when he was in Afghanistan, in firefights, doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, I read about it the following Sunday in the New York Times. Now, when my dad was in World War II, my mom said she never heard from him for three years. She didn't know if he was dead or alive. And then about 1946, early in the year, he came back from Germany and he walked in and started off just uh, at like some other 22-year-old. So, so, so these gifts that people give us allow us to live our lifestyles. We can't do what we do unless everybody pitches in together. All right. Okay, now this, is, now this was chicken scratch. This, this slide was actually supposed to be in the beginning next to those nice little uh, computer-generated maps and aerial photos. But the, the, here's an example of a nursery school. There was a fig tree. I wrote remove. These are my notes. Here was a plum tree. It was right next to this uh, awning we had to remove because it was dead. And uh, here's a cherry tree that was up against the fence. It had to go. But now the other uh, 13 trees, we pruned all these. And this was a, uh, uh, a the playground of a school, of this nursery. Of a, it was nursery. Nursery through, through high school. So there's five beach trees. And just walking around there with a clipboard and a pencil, I was able to communicate to the facility manager what it was that our contract uh, was going to consist of. And then I made a list. So these are all the trees. There were 17 trees to prune. Uh, beach, beach, hawthorn, pine, 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 pine beach, uh, cherry, fig. It, it, so, so, so I had my list, um, table of, it's called table of trees. Oh, write that down, table of trees. When your boss says, what did you learn at one o'clock? You can say, I learned how to write a table of trees consisting of three things. Okay, removal, uh, prunings, and then uh, the species breakdown. Species breakdown is item number three in table of trees. So we knew that there was eight pines, five beech, a hawthorn, a plum, a fig, and a cherry. These, these three different things make beautiful pie charts. It is so easy to turn this into a bar chart or a pie chart in a, in a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel or something like that. Um, and then I also put in the area so the three, the three trees that were removed were in three, these areas, 
there was 10 trees on the playground that were pr pruned, and then four of the trees were on Dakota Street, which is the side street there where the Hawthorne tree was. Okay. All right. So get some help. Collaborate. Jump in there. Get feedback. Participate. Grow together. Get with your people. Develop consensus. Communicate effectively. Hear from somebody else's point of view what's the most important thing. That's what this, that's what this slideshow shows. These people are all trying to get on the same page. And back at the office, they're going to want to know if you had consensus. They're going to want to know what the minority opinion was. They were going to want to know where the dissent was. Did somebody object to the plan of action? Did somebody uh, <coughs> think it was a good idea? So find out who concurs and write all that stuff down in, in your reports. I think we're about done here. Yeah. And uh, so I just wanted to uh, open it up to questions. Can somebody hit those lights back there? So tell us, tell us, what was the thing that I missed here? What can I, what can I help you with? Uh, when you're taking your core sample of the trunk, how deep do you go? Do you go to the center or do you go all the way to the drill bit? That dead oak that I stuck that drill bit in and it grabbed it and wouldn't let go, still has my broken off drill bit. So don't go 16 inches on a dead oak. Does that help? Sure. You can buy them. Uh, you know, I use the 16 inch. It'll go just in just about any tree and you can pull it out. Uh, uh, they're, um, uh, it's a 3D object. The, the, the alternative to drilling the tree with a hollow drill bit is to drill the tree with an electronic, electric current meter on it called a resistograph. And that output is a piece of paper that's as long as the drill bit with a bar graph and it has little wiggles and it shows how much electric current it took to drive the drill bit. So when the drill is going into wheat wood, you get really wide uh, 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 variations on this graph. The problem with that is that, that as you're drilling into that wood, you can feel how much pressure it takes for the drill bit to bite. So it's, it's personal feedback. And just because you have a piece of paper that shows that there was areas of decay from a resistograph, and those resistograph graphs have been used as testimony in a lot of court cases, doesn't tell you about you shoving that drill bit into that tree room and knowing how punky it was and where the cavities were. Is that helpful? They're using a lot of infrared now, aren't they? It, infrared, I, I, sonic is the next big thing uh, on uh, tr trying to decide what the internal condition of the wood is. If you put nails all the way around, spaced every four or six inches, and then you put little uh, electrodes on the nails on opposite sides, and you hit one of the nails with a hammer, and the computer measures the amount of time it takes for that sound of that hammer hit to go through the wood and come out to the nail on the opposite side where the other electrode is. So that is called sonic tomography. I don't know about infrared. Um, so, so, th so these gadgets, you know, those things are expensive. Oh my goodness. Those, those are like more than $5,000. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm leery of, uh, I'm, I'm leery of, wow, look at this. We have one minute left. Ha! It is, actually, that's on that timer. Does anybody actually know what time it is? We're going to be having a red one. We're going to have a redwood slideshow. Can you pull that up? Don't leave. This is going to be the good slideshow. It's, 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 it's the directory. Okay. Okay, redwood climbing, it's where it's at. Oh, that's how you did it. Well, I didn't do it. <laughs> there it is. It's in, it's in slide, slide, slideshow. So you over just a little bit. Oh, right. 